by coming up with simple solutions that were repeatable. Simplicity and the ease of doing things often meant success. But what we're doing is allowing you as an expert to codify that expertise. You need to understand your own strengths and weaknesses and then look for people that have the abilities that you don't have. So I, I sort of know that I'm good at finding the right people and Evan and James are incredibly able in terms of implementation. And so for me, I'm really good at spotting and things that are broken and I'm good at spotting people who can fix it. And I really just let get out of people's way. Um, James and Evan, I think they've just recently been voted in the the, uh, Forbes 30 most successful Asian Australians under 30 or some award, obviously, um, and they're thoroughly deserved. They will be, I'm sure, household names in 20 years time. They're incredibly talented young fellows. They have delivered 90% of checkbox. My role in it is really at the beginning, helping them um, to get started and then getting out of their way. If I see them making a mistake that maybe I've seen being made in other businesses. Sometimes I get involved. As they say, a canary in the mine, sometimes uh, relatively rare with those two. They're, they're quite remarkable young, young men. And the rest of the team at Checkbox, very diverse, very young, very energetic. Most startups fail. Yep. The reason why they fail is that people don't persist. That's a fundamental it's so hard to keep going. Yes, you've got to have an idea. You've got to have that product market fit. I'd love to have build a business around rocket boots, but sadly, um, rocket boots, I'm sure they'll exist soon, um, um, but uh, it's a very hard thing to do. That persistence and then finding the right people uh, are the core things. Finding money, you will do. Finding the right, the other, the other people to, to come on board, is, is also doable. Overcoming problems, you know, you can always overcome most problems. I've never ever given up in any of my businesses. My strategy has always been to look for those people with strengths that I don't have. So if I look at my co-founders at Checkbox, Evan has this incredible optimism and energy and belief. James is a very deep think thinker. He, he solves problems. The next step is then to spend some time and working out whether you're gonna get along. It's a bit like a personal relationship. People who fall in love with someone because of how they look or first impressions, it's a fairly risky thing. Um, I think we all know that the, the strong friendships are the ones where you invest a bit of time, get to know each other and work out whether there's something there. And that would be my recommendation to anyone starting a business is to spend some time getting to know somebody the first one is don't give up. The second one is communicate your idea, and get out there, socialize it, have a go. Don't get lost on the difficulties. Just, just keep moving forward. Find, find like-minded people. It's really hard to do this by yourself. So find someone you can partner with. I'm actually an Australian, um, uh, but I went to school in England. I was very lucky. And I wanted to join, I wanted to be a soldier. And um, I was fascinated by the Her Majesty's um, bodyguards, which are called the guards. And so um, I decided I would join them and you can as a Commonwealth citizen. So I did that and it was really hard because I had to spend a year as a, um, as a guardsman uh, when I wanted to be an officer. But after a year, I was allowed to, I went to the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst and I was commissioned into the Scots Guards. Part of our duties, apart from normal soldiering duties, is that we guard the royal family. You'll see us in our sort of red tunics and big furry hats. Um, they're called bearskins. Part of our duties are to guard Buckingham Palace, um, St. James's Palace, the Tower of London, Her Majesty up in the royal palaces in Holyrood in Scotland, and um, when they're on holiday in a place called Ballater um, or Balmoral best um, times of my life, mainly because of all the friends I made. How long did you spend in the military for? I was in the military for nearly 10 years. So um, some of that was spent doing fun stuff like um, 
what we call public duties guarding um, the royal family. But most of it I spent in um, uh, on operational tours in Northern Ireland, um, in um, Central America, um, and Cambodia, um, the Gulf. Um, and I, it was uh, again probably one of the best things I've ever done. Most people think the army is really um, regimented and routine and boring, but it's it's not. It's um, incredibly. It's about really serving, service, and and serving and and working with very talented and devoted um, young men and women. Um, and it's not all about war. Sadly, um, I did go to war, but um, we also did a lot of humanitarian and um, a lot of public service and and had some fun traveling around the world. It's great. It's really enjoyable. Improving. Um, how uh, you know diseases are treated and diagnosed, but I think people will always want a human interaction. I, I, I have a very positive views, um, but I think at the moment, and certainly in business, there's a lot of overhype around it. We need more of it, um, but I don't think the technology is quite there yet. It's only good at, at, at dealing with very specific, normally data-related uh, problems or very um, repeatable robotic problems. I love um, the UK because it's a very diverse country um, in terms of uh, each area you go to is very um, different um, uh, and closeness to Europe. I'm very much a Europhile. I loved it when I was young because you could travel very easily. Um, but I love Australia because I've got kids now and bringing up kids here, it's such a beautiful place. And I sort of pinch myself every time I look at the, you know, beautiful Bronte Beach or Clavelli Beach, uh, all the wonderful countryside here. I, I think it's, it's an incredibly unique and we're um, sort of landscape and environment and also incredibly diverse too, um, which I, I think, you know, just like my business uh, checkbox, um, you really benefit from that cultural um, uh, diversity in business and I think Australia really benefits from that. Uh, so I am one of the patrol captains at um, Bronte so I run the safety on the beach and Bronte is a very dangerous beach it's between Bondi and um, Clavelli. Mm. My tips for everyone going to the beach is to swim between the flags. We Most of our rescues there are probably people who aren't used to going to the beach much. We have um, a lot of uh, backpackers from Europe, um, people from Asia coming to the beach and they're not familiar with the waves or the surf. So they don't understand that they need to swim between the flags and they don't understand about the um, power of the sea. And so they quite easily get out of their depth. Swim between those yellow and red flags. Um, if in doubt, ask uh, a lifesaver or a lifeguard. Um, they're on all, all the majority of our beaches and about where it's safe to swim um, and never swim alone. Um, and if in doubt, if you're not sure about whether it's safe, then don't go swimming. We have a lot, sadly, a lot of deaths uh, in Australia because um, of people just getting out of their, um, out of their comfort zone in, in the surf and, and drowning, sadly. I've actually been bitten by a shark. No way. Yeah, just here. Oh my gosh, wow. Um, but... It's really close. It's almost like at your wrist and everything. Else. Yeah, so... Um, but it wasn't... Um, it was in a, an accident, bizarrely, on a boat. boat. So I, I actually dive a lot and I see sharks all the time. Uh, my oh, point is, I was messing with the shark. shark. We caught the shark fishing and it was on a boat and it bit my arm. Quite rightly. <laughs> that was my <laughs> own fault. messing with it. So... Um, the, the truth is, sadly on occasion, on very rarely, that people uh, uh, and sharks come across each other and some sharks, a very few, uh, might misinterpret who you are and, and um, uh, on occasion bite you. But really 99.9% .9 of the time, sharks just swim past you. You never see them. It's really, really safe in our waters. Um, so don't worry about um, marine life out there. You're more likely to be uh, have an accident in a car or get bitten by a dog than you are to be bitten by a shark. So don't worry about those things out there. 
Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Convo Couch and thank you to Paul for coming on today. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the links below to Checkbox AI and subscribe too. See you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this episode in a series where we interview business leaders, tech innovators and startup founders about their business journey, insights and reflections. If you find value in this, please leave us a comment below and also like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Enjoy!